Every year, sepsis takes more lives than breast, bowel, and prostate cancer combined. Globally, it kills over 11 million people each year. That's nearly one in every five deaths worldwide. To put that into perspective, that's more than the population of Portugal gone every single year from a condition most people have never even heard of. Think about that for a moment. We all know someone who's battled cancer, someone who's had a heart attack, or someone who's suffered from a stroke. These conditions get headlines, awareness campaigns, and charity events. But sepsis? It lurks quietly in the background, claiming millions of lives without most of us even knowing its name. Now imagine waking up one morning feeling just a little off. Maybe you think you've caught a cold, you have some muscle aches, a slight fever, and you're more tired than usual. You decide to stay in bed and rest. A few hours later, you start shaking uncontrollably. Your breathing feels harder. You're confused. You try to stand, but feel dizzy and weak. By the time you realize this is serious, you may already be in life-threatening danger. That's how fast sepsis can move. Sepsis is not a rare, only in hospitals kind of condition. It can affect anyone, anywhere, from a newborn baby in a rural clinic to a healthy young adult in a city apartment. It can begin with something as simple as a cut on your hand, a urinary tract infection, a chest infection, or even food poisoning. It can happen in the richest countries in the world and in the poorest, and it doesn't discriminate by age, gender, or background. So, what exactly is sepsis? It's a life-threatening reaction to infection. Normally, your immune system is your body's defense army, fighting off invaders like bacteria, viruses, or fungi. But in sepsis, that army goes rogue. Instead of targeting only the infection, your immune system triggers an overwhelming and uncontrolled inflammatory response that damages your own tissues and organs. This massive inflammation causes your blood vessels to leak, your blood pressure to plummet, and your organs to start shutting down. Blood flow to vital organs like the brain, heart, and kidneys decreases. Without urgent medical treatment, the damage can be irreversible. This is why sepsis is sometimes called blood poisoning. But that phrase doesn't capture how complex and dangerous it truly is. If the condition worsens, it can lead to septic shock, a critical drop in blood pressure that can cause death in hours. Even with treatment, septic shock has a very high mortality rate. Severe sepsis can kill up to half of the people who develop it. And for survivors, life after sepsis can be very different. Many people experience what's called post-sepsis syndrome, which can last for months or years. This includes symptoms like severe fatigue, memory loss, difficulty concentrating, anxiety, depression, nightmares, muscle weakness, chronic pain, and even ongoing organ problems. Some survivors say it feels like they've aged 20 years in just a few weeks. The most powerful tool we have to fight sepsis is early recognition. That's where the simple mnemonic S-E-P-S-I-S -S comes in. Remember, S is for slurred speech or confusion. E is for extreme shivering or muscle pain, fever. P is for passing no urine all day. S is for severe breathlessness. I is for it feels like you are going to die. That overwhelming sense that something is terribly wrong. And the final S is for skin that is mottled or discolored. If you or someone you love has an infection and begins showing these symptoms, this is not the time to wait and see. This is the time to act immediately. Sepsis is a medical emergency, just like a heart attack or stroke. The difference is that you may have only hours, not days, to make that decision. Let's picture two scenarios. In one, a father of three develops what seems like food poisoning. He's vomiting, has diarrhea, and feels weak. The family thinks he just needs fluids and rest. By the following morning, he's confused, pale, and struggling to breathe. In the second scenario, a teenager develops a high fever and muscle aches after a sports injury. Her parents think it's just a virus. That night, she starts shivering uncontrollably and says, I feel like I'm going to die. In both cases, these are classic sepsis warning signs. But if they're missed, the outcome can be fatal. Once sepsis is suspected in a hospital, healthcare workers often follow a set of urgent steps known as the sepsis six. These are give high-flow oxygen, 
take blood cultures to identify the infection, start intravenous antibiotics, measure lactate levels in the blood, give intravenous fluids, and closely monitor urine output. These steps aren't complicated, but their power lies in how quickly they're done. In fact, starting them within the first hour of recognizing sepsis can dramatically improve survival rates. The challenge is that sepsis can look like many other things. Early on, it can mimic flu, pneumonia, gastroenteritis, or even a migraine. This is why so many cases are missed until the person is critically ill, and it's why awareness is just as important for the general public as it is for medical professionals. While anyone can get sepsis, some groups are more at risk. These include newborns and very young children whose immune systems are still developing, pregnant women whose bodies undergo major immune changes, older adults whose immune systems are often weaker, people with chronic conditions like diabetes, cancer, kidney disease, or lung disease, people with weakened immune systems due to HIV, chemotherapy, or certain medications, and those recovering from major surgery, burns, or severe injuries. There's also a link between global health challenges and sepsis risk. In areas with limited access to healthcare, clean water, and antibiotics, infections are more likely to become severe. In high-income countries, antibiotic resistance, where bacteria no longer respond to common treatments, is making some infections harder to control, raising the risk of sepsis. For those who survive, the journey doesn't always end when they leave the hospital. Many face months of rehabilitation to regain strength and function. Some never fully recover. Studies show that survivors are at higher risk of death in the months and years after sepsis, as well as a higher likelihood of heart problems, kidney disease, and mental health challenges. Families are also affected. Watching a loved one go through sepsis can be traumatic, and the emotional impact can last for years. So what can you do right now to protect yourself and your loved ones? First, learn the symptoms using the sepsis mnemonic we spoke about earlier. Second, act fast. If you see these signs in someone with an infection, treat it as an emergency. Call your local emergency number, whether it's 999, 911, 112, or the number used in your country. Don't wait to see if it improves. Third, if you are already at a clinic or hospital, tell the staff clearly, I am worried about sepsis. That single word can make them act more quickly. Fourth, Share this knowledge. Talk to your family, friends, colleagues, and community groups. Awareness spreads like a ripple, and in the case of sepsis, that ripple can save lives. There are also steps you can take to reduce your risk of infections that can lead to sepsis. These include staying up to date with recommended vaccinations, practicing good hand hygiene, caring for wounds properly, seeking medical advice early for any infection that seems to be getting worse and managing chronic health conditions with the help of your healthcare provider. Remember, sepsis is a global killer. It doesn't care where you live, how old you are, or how healthy you've been, but it is treatable if caught early. You don't have to be a doctor to save a life. You just have to recognize the signs and act without delay. If there's one thing I want you to take from this video, it's this. Never ignore sudden, severe symptoms when there's an infection involved. Ask the question that could save a life. Could it be sepsis? That question, asked in time, can mean the difference between life and death. Thank you for watching. Please, take a moment now to share this video with at least one person and leave a comment to confirm you have done so. Because awareness is contagious, and in this case, it's the kind of contagion that saves lives.